Hi, I'm Ella Daniels with Partnership for a Healthy America. Today I'm interviewing Dr. Amaya Beckfar Weddell of Mind Body as part of our Industry Rapid Response Series. This is where we sit down with industry experts and hear from them how they're responding to the changing landscape of food, health, and wellness in America. The topic of our conversation today is how the wellness industry went digital. And my guest is Dr. Amaya Beckfar Weddell. Dr. Weddell is a Wonder Woman of Tech. She's the Vice President of Research and Product Development at MindBody, which is the wellness industry's leading technology platform. Welcome, Dr. Weddell. Hello. Three weeks ago, um, the WHO declared COVID-19 a pandemic, and shortly thereafter, the U.S. declared a state of emergency. On, and three weeks later, here we are. Could you tell us what the state of the wellness industry is today? Yeah, absolutely. I think that we could never have anticipated a world where suddenly everyone was going to be trapped in their home um, and no longer able to interact and interface with the wellness providers that they, they know and love and being kind of locked away from community. But fortunately, um, we have such amazing video, video conferencing technologies and platforms and a lot of, of evolution has happened in the technology landscape. So people have been just rapidly transforming their business models, how they interact with each, each other. Um, we're seeing it not only in business and also just in, in day to day, how we interface um, with, with our communities and our friends and our family. So um, it's been a, a rapid ride um, and transformation. It's been amazing to be a part of. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we're seeing lots of, lots of changes. We're measuring stuff with our data. We're trying to get our product roadmap ready for this new, this new landscape and this new world. Um, and we're learning as much as we can along the way. I remember last year, because I had the opportunity, as I mentioned to you, to hear you give the presentation on the state of the industry at the Bold Conference. And I remember um, and went back to look at the statistics that only a small percentage of studios, you said 5% were investing in live streaming video, and you said 17% reported that they had plans to do it. So if studios weren't prepared, you know, how do you think that the global fitness industry went digital overnight? I mean, yeah, it's again, nothing that we could have ever predicted or anticipated. So mind body had been thinking a lot about video and we've been studying it and also making plans um, on our, our product strategy and our company strategy overall, primarily because we were starting to see a lot of uptake in um, this new breed of in-home fitness um, platforms like Peloton and the hydro um, rowing machine and things like this. And we, we knew that it, it could be potentially be a threat to the industry, but if nothing else, we needed to start to, to kind of lean in and evolve our business or we could potentially be left behind or our customers also needed to be thinking about their digital strategy. Now we couldn't have anticipated <laughs> that this happened, the pandemic happened definitely, but um, we're seeing our businesses that are on our platform, so many of them are, they're entrepreneurs, they're small businesses, they're scrappy, they're crafty, they're creative. And we watched like over the weekend, businesses completely transform how they were doing things and going live stream and hacking together solutions to continue hosting classes and keeping their members and their communities engaged. And so we really tuned our research engine to get close to these um, early adopters and these, these leading businesses that were really getting creative with how they were promoting things on social and leveraging existing piece parts of our, our software um, and our marketplace ecosystem. Um, and we started putting together lots of thought material for businesses, how to, to transform yourself, to go digital, how to film live stream classes, every piece of education we could think of to get the word out there. Um, and you know, we're also studying how consumers are engaging on this front as well. And another statistic I have is on the consumer front, um, previously, when we were asking our consumers that come to the MindBody platform how much they did digital as part of our digital video as part mm -hmm. of their fitness team, in the past, it's about 18%. So maybe about a fifth of them were using this on a regular basis. 
Well, now post um, the COVID pandemic, we're seeing over half of them, 50% um, are using pre-recorded video, 60% are doing live stream classes. That's huge um, just to keep up with their, their fitness routine. So the consumers are hungry for it and yeah. businesses are rapidly adapting and, and putting together solutions to get out there. And so we're trying to continue to gear up our, our product um, as well to sort of anticipate this and better serve our businesses. I remember so clearly you trying to make the point of not seeing it as being a competition, but it being uh, complementary, you know, to the business. And obviously it'll be interesting how this, you know, plays out forward. But can you speak to what those business models are now? You know, our studios, um, some studios I know have an abridged class schedule. Like what are some of those um, decisions that studio owners are grappling with when they're thinking about, you know, um, how to keep staff and in, you know involved and just these sorts of tough tough decisions like are they making money you know how are they doing yeah i think so i think with with a fitness and now we serve fitness um integrative health and also salons and spas on our platform so i'll kind of talk to each one of these um fitness studios um those that are deciding to go digital um, can leverage a lot of the existing kind of infrastructure on mind body to do live streamed classes so what we're seeing is people listing virtual classes um, in our marketplace that consumers can find and book and pay for and then they'll just get a link to some kind of live stream platform um, so that they can sign up and join the class um, and if you've tried any of these yourself um, you'll know it's like it's a really great experience you see your community there the instructors are interacting with the class like it feels a lot like that kind of boutique group fitness experience um, and so I've seen businesses do you know they they maybe have an abridged schedule but they they will have like those live stream classes listed um, just like they normally would I've seen businesses do things like sell like virtual class packages or a virtual membership that's maybe a little bit discounted. I think what we're learning from the consumer demand side as, as well as um, from what we're seeing businesses do is that the price points are tend to be slightly lower than what they would be in the studio um, for various reasons. But um, yeah, so we're, we're seeing things like that. Um, on the integrative health side, not as many businesses I think can get by, but we are seeing some businesses do creative things like a lot of remote one-on-one -on -one, um, sessions. So you think about somebody who's living with chronic pain, that doesn't go away just because they're staying at home and um, the kinds of care that you get from a lot of the alternative medicine providers maybe isn't considered to be <clears throat> essential care and maybe these businesses are having to, to close down. Well, we're seeing some businesses do one-on-one -on -one appointments where at least you have a friendly face that you know help you with pain management. Maybe you can do stretches together. Um, maybe they can guide you through like breathing exercises or activities like that. So um, that's another, another way that we're seeing some, some creative um, adaptation. I think with a fitness business, one of the key decisions that these business owners have to make, like they had to make right away during the pandemic was whether to close, whether to pause or suspend all their memberships, because a lot of these businesses are basically getting most of their revenue from memberships, um, or whether they, can, they could put something together to keep their business running and to be offering and delivering value to their community and their member community in a way that, that would justify them keeping the memberships active so they could it's, it's still have that revenue base um, coming in. And that's a decision that each business has to address kind of on their own, like do they close their doors because of, of rent, is the staffing cost and expense going to be too high? We've, we have seen some of that and we've seen other businesses really lean into to digital and be able to justify, um, justify a membership, maybe transform a membership, offer something new. Um, and then we're seeing really exciting um, consumer acquisition possibilities happen where suddenly your class could be filled with people from all over the globe, right? Yeah. To mind body and find a class in like New York City um, and take it from like a top a top studio there. It's really kind of wild. So. Yeah, on a personal note, that's been a fun thing to to practice with girlfriends that are across the U.S. You know, as you know, something that you can't otherwise do. And I think that there's like there's so much of um, I think 
as, as hard and as challenging as this all is, seeing people find those silver linings, you know, um, in this innovation has been really inspiring. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and so the next um, section that I kind of wanted to ask you about is the role of wellness in this time of crisis. And I wanted to first begin by asking you just how mind body's doing, you know, how are you adapting to this new reality and what are some of the real time decisions that you're having to make, you know, to keep the, the business continuity for your staff and for the organization overall? Yeah, it's been, it's been an interesting transformation. Um, we do have we've we've adapted our business we you know we're a, we're a, a global business we have offices all over the globe and so we've become pretty familiar with telework and the notion of telework um, on my team some of my staff is you know fully remote so we're pretty comfortable with using technology um i do think that there's a bit of adaptation where like suddenly like we're not seeing anybody at all <laughs> um, and so my team and you know a lot of the staff has tried to come up with really creative ways of of intentionally spending time together so we might do like have have like a team lunch remotely or we might do wellness classes together um we um you know i think that it there's been some challenges with just learning how to communicate and keep everybody in the loop. And so we're really leaning into tools like Slack and um, channels and just being more intentional about, about communication. But what's been really the most, this has probably been some of the most rewarding time that I've ever been at MindBody. I mean, I love this industry. I love our customers and seeing how devastating this has impacted them to have to close their doors. It's this call to action that we've never really experienced as a company before. And to see all of these team members come together and suddenly be like, what can I do to help? Like, you know, okay, we're going to write like 10 blog posts this week, all about like creative ways that businesses can survive. And we're going to do research with people that are real early adopters and leaning in and have creative crafty ideas. And we're going to share it with everybody because we want everybody to be brought along on this journey and survive. So it's been rewarding from that perspective and also to see kind of the gratitude from our customers come through. Um, we did things like um, offering some fee relief, which was met with like so much positive sentiment from from um, our customers, and then just all the education and kind of accelerating this video um, product to market. So Mind Body is accelerating. We have a press release going out today of of a video offering that we're putting out um, that is different than these third party solutions because it's it's actually on Mind Body and there's a lot more security and it's easy to set up, it's integrated in the platform and everything. So we're doing all these things to help our customers through this time. It's been super rewarding. Yeah, fast turnaround on, on that one. Suddenly like this big company, it's like, okay, we gotta be more like a startup, guys. Go fast, people need us right now. <laughs> well, and yeah, calling on calling on that of your past, you know, of the, of the history of the company too. So some of the really cool stats that we learned um, just over the last couple of weeks, uh, I think we saw like a 500% increase in searches for virtual. And we right now are aware of, there's about 13,000 virtual classes per day that wow. are being offered on the platform. And so we were quickly like, oh my God, we're probably the biggest virtual wellness platform out there right now. And, you know, we haven't even released our product yet. So this is stuff people can just do with the booking and scheduling and marketing promotional kind of features of, of mind body and you know once we do release our product we expect that it's going to grow even more um but that was pretty exciting to see like these are just the early adopters who are you know putting together a, a solution that is really exciting and just like really rising to the moment too, too so. what role do you see your sector playing during this time of crisis yeah wellness is i mean I think that we've already seen this cultural understanding of the importance of wellness. Um, there's, there's so much thought leadership around the value of wellness. Um, and in this time where, you know, not only is there like illness and risks of illness and so things like personal hygiene and care and rest and sleep are so important, but also just the mental burden of, of being separated, being home alone, um, make a lot of these um, experiences so valuable. 
like I can't tell you how how moving it is to be like on a Zoom call with like all these people that I usually work out with, like I at least can see my little community there. And there's so much of this, like, it's not just a fitness opportunity for me, but it's like, I get to have some social engagement and feel like I'm, I'm part of this group, even though we're just on a screen together. Totally. I told my husband the first class that I joined, that was like a regular studio that I go to here. It was the, the most normalcy I had that whole first week after, after we were closed. And I think that people are really feeling those, you know, those benefits. Mm -hmm. And yet, you know, group fitness, you know, is so dependent on th that community model. Are you hearing or seeing ways that studio owners or in instructors are kind of coming behind their communities? Have you heard any stories of that? Um, yeah, I mean, I know I I've definitely seen examples of, of of studio owners that are um, looking for for more ways to to engage their community, um, we've seen a lot of outreach um, from them on social media. We've also seen um, cool like opportunities that have come up where they're trying to do more to help through the crisis, like through supporting donations for masks or for um, you know the homeless is another um, area that's probably going to get hit really hard. Um, and so volunteerism. Those are all parts of, of wellness when we can be thinking about um, how we can be, be, be of service. Um, so, Have you seen any examples of, um, or of clients of yours that are trying to incorporate kids more into the routines? <laughs> You know, I haven't done I haven't done a thorough uh, investigation of this, but I definitely should because I know that. Um, well, as a mom, I my kids are at home, um, and we get kind of like guidance or suggestions from their their PE teacher of virtual things. So we're we're big fans of Cosmic Kids Yoga, which is yeah. this this pre recorded yoga video. Um, I haven't seen. Um, I haven't looked in closely at our, our customer base, but I would imagine that that's a, that's a cool opportunity for, for serving um, a population that is also impacted. So yeah, you know. and you and you mentioned that some studios are are adjusting their price points on it. Mm -hmm. Is have you seen? And I've noticed that some are even offering free classes. Is there any way through Mind Body to search or to find those free classes? You know, whether that's for I'm thinking of um, college students who we work with through our Healthy Campus Initiative, you know, who no longer have access to those facilities or people who have lost jobs or, you know, had a pay cut and stuff like that, thinking about a way to search for um, you reduced price classes or anything. Yeah, I, there's there's lots of filter functionality available. We actually just released a virtual filter to our, our website and um, it's, it should be fully rolled out in um, both of our apps. Um, and we're, we've been instructing our, our studio owners to use the word virtual um, in how they're describing these classes so that it's, um, it helps with kind of the SEO that goes along with yep. their platform. Um, and it, it also pulls in other things behind the scenes like live stream and online and things like that. So um, you can get kind of a curated list of things that are only offered um, virtually. And then you can do kind of sliders on price points and things like that. Cool. Um, and I guess speaking of studio owners, the last section I wanted to talk with you about is just advice for, for studio owners. And I, um, I know last year at Bold, you, ch you shared your personal philosophy about, about fear and how it encourage us, encourages us to be curious and to lean in. What data or insights are you seeing on your end that you think would be helpful for, for studio owners to be aware of? Yeah, I think some of the, the themes I already touched on um, are definitely there. There are areas where businesses can be creative about keeping their doors open. Um, I am very close with a studio, a yoga studio owner here in San Luis Obispo, where I live, um, and she, you know, I was I was very interested to learn as she was taking her studio to virtual, like what that looked like, and there was a lot of fear. She, she had a lot of fear of like, I don't know how to use Zoom and which platform do I pick and how do I do all of this and how am I gonna make sure that, you know, I don't lose my members, um, but they just kept leaning in and they, you know, they're, they're now like, I think offering maybe four classes and they have a whole digital library 
Um, they're offering special kinds of memberships and I see lots of cool engagement they're doing on social to keep the community engaged and to be offering valuable content to them. So, you know, it's scary to go through this time, but I think the businesses that survive are the ones who can rapidly transform themselves. And, and, and yeah, and body is thinking about that too. Like we want to survive and we're going to transform ourselves. <laughs> Think about that loyalty too, you know, of, of, um, you know, I, I will never forget the studio that I took the first class with, you know, when you were at home and you really were able to log on. I just feel like, um, you know, shout out to all those people that were able to make that pivot so quickly, you know, because that week we needed them, right? <laughs> we needed, we need, they need we us needed them. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. We need each other. Totally. Yeah. I, um, I, I, I completely agree with that. And um, I, you know, I didn't touch on the salon and spa industry at all, but we're also seeing some creative things going on there. Yeah. Um, tell me more it's a little bit more difficult and those arguably those businesses are getting hit harder. Um, but we, we've seen some businesses be able to survive and bring in a little bit of revenue by doing, um, online, um, appointment con consultations. So sometimes when you get a new type of service, it's really more of a check-in and um, you have to, you know, have this, the person evaluate your hair or maybe ask you medical questions. If it's like you're getting lashes or brow services or something. So, we're hearing about some studios that are able to still book those first time consultation appointments. Um, and we're also seeing businesses um, do a lot more in terms of retail sales. So even doing an appointment consultation, like you could imagine getting a skincare consultation and then having that, that provider recommend for you like a certain set of, of products and maybe even doing like drop shipping to your, your home. So um, that's, that's one way we've been able to, to see some of the businesses continuing to do a little bit. It's kind of like the takeout version. of <laughs> Totally. That's great. That's awesome. I haven't, I wasn't as familiar with that, but that's really cool. That's really mm -hmm. cool to hear about. I guess thinking about the industry overall, so the stat I have from the Global Wellness Institute is that the wellness industry is a $4.2 trillion global market and it's had year over year growth. What do you predict will be the story for 2020? If, will, will there be growth and if so, where? I think a lot of our economies are gonna be hit hard and the wellness economy will like just to be you know, candid and stuff. I think the wellness economy will be hit hard. Um, a big part of that 4.3 trillion, and it was revised a little bit this year to be 4.5 trillion. Um, a large part of that market, I think probably over a billion dollars of it is about um, travel. It's the travel and, um, you know, all of these like beautiful resorts and places like that, that are all getting hit really, or the hospitality industry is getting hit really, really hard right now too. Um, so we will see a, a blow. We're going to see a transformation. Um, I don't expect that digital is going to stop once things go back to normal. I think it's going to be just part of the offering and expectation. Um, so that's going to be exciting. Um, and to me, it's just telling me that technology is going to be even more important to wellness providers um, in the future. Yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting. I remember you had this stat about how much per month, you know, we're spending on wellness services. So it'll be interesting to see, I don't remember it being like two, less than 300, but something like that, that people are spending. It'll be interesting to see what happens with that number this year. I know. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I mean, I'm certainly spending on my virtual <laughs> classes. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. And, and in kind of this way, you know, where you're trying you know, you're looking out for your small businesses and you're trying to figure out how you can support those local economies. And so I think that there's this, this fun exchange, which is like a really transparent, what do you want to see from us? And our, um, the customer service and like that feedback loop is like, <laughs> is really strong between customers. I know it's very, it's actually very gratifying to be, to be continuing to support these businesses during this time. And um, I think we, we love our community, small businesses so much. Like we, we don't want to see them fail or be forced to, to shut their doors. And so it's, it's a wonderful, like, you know, give, give where I'm getting this wonderful wellness experience at home. I'm feeling still connected to my community and then I'm helping support businesses that I really care about and believe in. Awesome. Well, thank you.
Well, thank you for your time tonight. Can you leave us with one um, go-to workout routine or like healthy snack that you and your family are eating at home? My go-to workout routine. Um, well, I would have to say I've been doing a lot. I've, I've been doing a lot more outdoor activities, getting out in the fresh air. Um, my go-to is probably a hike with my, my dog. Um, out in out in the world um, and then I've been really enjoying um, getting stronger at doing kind of boot camps there's an awesome studio called McAllister training that's here in town that I'd never had the courage to go to um, somehow joining a virtual class is a little bit less intimidating um, especially after you've come to your first so getting stronger in my boot camp and um, doing some hiking awesome well thank you so much for your time today Sure. I um, really appreciate it. Really appreciate your insights, especially at this time. Thank you to our guests and many thanks to all of you who are watching from home. Recordings of this and future conversations can be found on Partnership for a Healthier America's website. That's a healthieramerica.org. And we encourage you to stay engaged with PHA by following us on social media as well.